That's right. We're on live. We're going to get this thing done one way or another. What's up to y'all? sizes out here but we're going to keep protesting out here regardless of the numbers until something changes so welcome in and uh thank you for the support out there and uh hoping everybody is doing well and we'll get started here after a while i think we're waiting for some more people to come out Yeah. We typically start at 9.30, uh, uh, um, like but, uh, uh, yeah. Hey, let's hope the police don't get called in. Yeah. But it just, it, it shows the way that they operate, though. It shows the way that they operate, because instead of, instead of talking about things civilly, and trying to work them, they call the police to try to silence the uh, people who are, you know, who tried to work with them privately, and so people come out. Well, it's not like they have to go very far. You guys are right outside of their business. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're All they gotta do is open the door and go talk to you guys. It's easy. Right. Right. Hell, they but could even open the door and invite you they in. Could. They, they could, but but they have the door locked with a ring doorbell, so they can choose to let in whomever they want and deny whomever they want. Do they really? And, uh, yeah, yeah. It's 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 locked electronically, and so you either have to have a key fob or be approved to come in. Um, and come down this way, and I'll, so like I'll stay on this sidewalk, but these steps uh, right up here. Mm -hmm. Go to the center, and there's a ring doorbell right out there. Um, so they they can essentially, um, well, the executive director Elsie um, has uh, some usable vision, and then the uh, the HR um, does it as well, and um, basically, um, yeah, they. They use the ring cam to determine who's out there, and um, that door is locked the whole time. So this place. people just can't come in. Nope. nope. But is it? Nope. Was that a COVID thing? Is that a what is that? They say it's a COVID thing, but they, they can't use that as an excuse anymore. And they, they I was gonna say, trying to something and and say, but if you do come in, you have to wear masks and social distance. That's just an excuse not to have a number of people in the building. Yeah. And not, uh, not anywhere else. Yeah, exactly. And, and the they don't want to be outnumbered. <laughs> the interesting thing is, is while I was working there, um, we were told that uh, we didn't have to wear masks, but if a client came in and was more comfortable with masks, then we would, uh, we would then have to put masks on for the sake of the clients. Uh -huh. Otherwise, they wouldn't require masks. Interesting. That's isn't that's it? that's from that's from somebody who used to be on the uh, inside of right. the slaughterhouse. But you know, everything is subject to change according to yeah. who, who the audience is. Yeah, yeah, like 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 how you know if if uh, if the questioner is ABC ten, oh, we don't want to talk, we don't want to be on camera, we'll just give you a written statement. Right. And uh, you know, we we won't discuss personnel issues. You know, that, and that's the thing. You can't you can't resolve issues if you don't discuss them. Right. And instead of trying to resolve issues, a center for the blind calls the police on blind protesters, and uh, you know that that says a lot. I mean, it it proves right there one of the points that we are out here um, trying to bring it out to light is that you know this this. Um, does not 
want any criticism. They want to intimidate us and shut us down. And that was the act of calling the police. They have not reached all the time. Yeah. <laughs> all of our sites are public. YouTube, Twitter, yeah, YouTube, Facebook. Twitter Facebook. I mean, that, our personal page. That says a lot if, if there's anybody out there on Twitter from the news stations that were tagged watching this. I mean, you know, uh, what are your thoughts on, you know, the, the thought of a center for the blind and the police on blind protesters when, you know, we're, we're supposed to advocate for ourselves. And when there was an attempt by Stockton Blind Alliance to uh, advocate privately and everything was, you know, disregarded and then you go public. You know, we're, we're not out here making threats. We're not out here, um, you know, throwing out um, oh, expletives and no. things like that. We're Just out here exercising our First Amendment right, and not just for ourselves, but for the blind community as a whole in the San Joaquin Valley and surrounding areas. But we get the police called on us. Yes. We get the press called on we us. Want, how many weeks have you guys done this now? I think this is week 50. Yep. Started May 17th. Not a peep. Just telling the nope. newspaper we're out here saying nasty things, telling the Department of Aging that they hadn't heard anything about being a Even though they followed the Facebook page when it was open. Right. And they've been in meetings with since right. 2018. And not a peep not a peep they expect the community to follow like sheep <laughs> that's right so we tried to get them to have open annual meetings so that the public could be part of this but they don't send that invitation out to anyone except the client calendar buried on an internal page of their website we've never seen anybody from the community there that's why we finally had to come out here and on social media to be heard because they're ignoring us they're trying to intimidate yeah, us right. shut us down wait us out make us go away like they always do not anymore no, the blind need to be a part of community center for the blind right. and visually impaired. if it's for the blind then it should be for the blind, sure we're not blind. Oh, yep. i think we actually have another uh good morning hey good morning did you say number 37? Yeah. I almost wore the bomber's hat today. I can't give you a hug before we start camping. Uh, like oh, I had a bomber's hat from 2003. Aww. Uh, or four. I wonder if they four. still look the same. I don't know. It's blue with, with a little bomber's hat. Did you say bomber's hat? Yeah. Hey, like pretty good. How about you, Ron? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, maybe it's the same. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we're not talking about being bombers. It is the Long Island Bombers. They beat baseball teams for the blind out of Long Island, New York. Just in case nice. you get misquoted. <laughs> Somebody brought yeah, that Cliff up. Yeah, Cliff was just asking about that right now, like too. The irony of okay. the name of they used to have the Oklahoma like... City Bombers. That was weird. Now, wouldn't it be funny if the poster is showing up right now and we don't even have the megaphones on? Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can totally see it. No, it's just for Andy here. Oh. So should we wake wake them up with the chant? Wake our I I think it's time to right. I think it's time to wake some people up. So, good morning. We're Stockton Blind Alliance. We are out here for the 16th time in front of Community Center for the Blind, waiting to be heard, waiting for appropriate responsiveness, transparency, accountability. Still waiting. Still waiting. Our phone number is 209-200-8589 if you have concerns to share with us. If you'd like to share in our advocacy, we will support you. Please support us. Please help the blind be heard and let the Community Center for the Blind know that the blind should be an integral part of this organization. We should be represented on the board of directors. That's right. And 
doesn't mean they are overqualified. We won't say they're underqualified as long as they have a heart for the blind and they will listen to those of us that actually have the lived experience of being blind. That's the biggest qualification right there. Have a heart. Be open. Be kind and listen to the blind. Be open. Be kind. Fix the blind center. The blind deserve better. Fix the blind center. The blind deserve better. Fix the blind center. The blind deserve better. Donations support blind degradation. Your taxes. Donations support blind degradation. Your taxes. Donations support blind degradation. Your taxes. Donations support blind degradation. We want an audit. Where did the money go? We want an audit. Where did the money go? We want an audit. Where did the money go? We want an audit. Where did the money go? Tell us where the money went. We want a newborn president. Tell us where the money went. We want a newborn president. Tell us where the money went. We want a newborn president. Tell us where the money went. We want a newborn president. Hey, Jen. Uh, on that on that particular chance for those that are watching that might be new to the protest can you um can you give a bit of an explanation as far as that the meaning behind that chant as far as tell us where the money went yeah i mean aside from the accusations of financial misappropriation from an operations manager before that were never dealt with one of our main concerns is how a building formerly on 130 west flora street that was donated for the purpose of being a center for the blind was somehow secretly sold by this organization. And it was not disclosed until a year and a half later, June 8th of 2021, when we were moved here in 2016. Well, this place was rented for thousands of dollars a month. That one sat abandoned, paid off, getting broken into by the homeless, twice the size, perfectly equipped for the blind, totally going to waste because someone wanted a nice, door stuck in the office, a cold office that did not have room for activities or fundraisers. They sold it secretly after they said we could return. We were only renting up here until downtown improved a little. We asked even when it was sold and they would not tell us. Finally, like I said, June 8th, 2021, they said it was sold in January of 2020 as anyone who lives online can tell. That is not transparency. No. And it is even, the building is a huge loss. It was a great place for the blind. It has so many memories. This is no comparison here. But the waste of money, the financial waste, the waste of our time, and mostly the example of why there is no trust here, because there's no transparency, there's no accountability, no regard for the input of the blind. We had a few peaceful blind protesters back then standing silently with signs on the sidewalk. That director, Michelle Galvin, called the police on them. She didn't want the public to see there was a problem, but they won't listen. They always try to shut us down. They are not shutting us down this time. We are not going away. And that board president, Judy Howell, has been president for over a dozen years over that operations manager that tormented us, over Michelle Galvin, who finally quit for whatever reason in October of last year. And now over Elsie Verada, who we objected strongly to, brought many complaints against. She was continually promoted instead of disciplined, fired, or made to apologize and change her behavior. Now they put her as the permanent director, as you saw in our letter to the editor in Sunday that we sent in in April, but thank God it was read now. We appreciate the record for continuing to share our story. We asked to be part of the process of vetting and finding a quality, qualified executive director that cares about the blind. That's right. We have been ignored on that front too. We need your help. Yes. We want a new board president. We want new blood on the board of directors. Yes. And we want members of Stockton Blind Alliance represented on the board of directors. Yes. Because without that vital input, 
they cannot be truly representing the blind of San Joaquin County and beyond. That's right. Right. Yep. How did, oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, uh, how, how about on, on the on the subject of activities for the blind, uh, tell us a bit about what happens uh, to the beatball team yes. and the way that they uh, the way that they dealt with that. I, the Operation Vander Body Helmet in 2011 did not like how popular the beat baseball program was getting. And she decided to, as they always do, threaten with loss of services and penalize us to try to kill that program. We were happily under their nonprofit status. We were doing all the fundraising, but you know, they were quote our sponsors. It was a mutual relationship. They could have said this isn't working anymore, but that wasn't the point. The point was to penalize and punish us and torment us by killing this team. They rock our world in a minute by saying we're locking up all that moldering eight-year-old equipment in the shed you can't use it anymore you can't use the team name anymore you know since 2003 you've been playing you have the world series here in stockton teams from all over the u.s and taiwan glorifying the blind center but no now it's dead you can't use the name you can't use the equipment and then strong people like david here you know members have kept it going I mean, now it's been 20 years. We're going on our 21st year at the team here in Stockton. But that is without any support from the Blind Center. And like I said, all you have to say is, we're not going to do this. But you don't try to kill it. You don't say, oh, when we move, you'll still be able to fire your ceramics at Delta College and sell all the kilns in the old building. And then do nothing here. You don't tell people on the same day you have a transportation meeting, people from throughout the county that need to learn how to ride county public transportation. Services are ending with our band program. Yeah. And when is that happening? Today. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. not to mention someone from Tracy with yeah. the only option being Van Gogh would cost $35 to $40 round trip on a fixed blind income. Yeah, I know how that goes. Took, yeah, to come in, try to come in one day a week for one service. And then there aren't even services or classes to come to. And that was prior to the pandemic. Now they're trying to put the support group, which we know is not very supportive nor confidential, right. as a hybrid to make their calendar look like they have something going on. We know they just added the matter of balance class, which is a good class. I did take that before, but I know the center gets paid big bucks to put it on, which is the primary motivation. So sadly, sadly, yes, there are not offering. I mean, we had an activities director, Janet, that had it huge heart for the blind they let her go the instant the pandemic hit you know she could have been doing games or book groups or anything with clients online with someone they know cares to connect us throughout this pandemic no they wanted to get rid of social and recreational programs they kept trying to figure out how to did it and as always the pandemic was an excuse and they are using that as an excuse to block us out to give excuses for why there aren't White staff have left, white clients have left. We know it's a toxic environment. Right. We know, and we want to share the truth because they won't. I did marketing and outreach here until 2017. I was, I was disgusted representing this place because I knew what was going on inside and I knew I could help better from the outside, but I couldn't afford to leave. Thankfully, my husband, help me to leave so that I could recover and get better from the outside because this is a toxic environment it impacts your health it is called workplace bullying it is called toxic environment it's called toxic workplace it affects all the way down the clients feel it the co-workers feel it whether they're targeted or not right. it needs to stop yes it does blind respect you never show tell her what I hit the road blind respect you never show Tell her what I hit the road. Blind respect you never show. Tell her what I hit the road. Blind respect you never show. Tell her what I hit the road. Let the veil drop. The exploitation has to stop. Let the veil drop. The exploitation has to stop. Let the veil drop. The exploitation has to stop. Let the veil drop. The exploitation has to stop. Let the clients grow. Administration has to go. Let the clients grow. Administration has to go. 
Let the clients grow. Administration has to go. Let the clients grow. Administration has to go. We're stocked in blind alliance. We're standing up to help the clients. Stocked in blind alliance. We're standing up to help the clients. Stocked in blind alliance. We're standing up to help the clients. Stocked in blind alliance. We're standing up to help the clients. And just to reinforce the point. COVID's no excuse. You need to stop the blind abuse. COVID's no excuse. You need to stop the blind abuse. COVID's no excuse. You need to stop the blind abuse. COVID's no excuse. You need to stop the blind abuse. The blind want more. Hurry up, unlock the door. The blind want more. Hurry up, unlock the door. The blind want more. Hurry up, unlock the door. The blind want more. Hurry up, unlock the door. You say if people come to that matter of balance class, they have to wear masks and practice physical distancing, social distancing. That's just an excuse to not have a number of people in the building. Right. Because those regulations are not in place anywhere else. And I know that you want 12 people to get fully paid for running that class plus an instructor and assistant, we're familiar with the size of that conference room. I doubt those people are six feet apart Try if you get a full class. So, you know, watch your message, watch your hypocrisy, watch what you say. We are watching you. We want everyone to reach out to this board of directors at board at communitycenterfortheblind.org. Tell them they need to listen to the blind. Tell them just because they're an independent private Nonprofit doesn't mean they don't have the answer to anyone, That's right. especially the population they purport to serve. That's right. We know the Department of Rehabilitation gives them two thirds, at least, of their funding. They don't care about funding anything else as a benefit to the blind unless they're getting paid at this point. We know that there's private donations. We know you can hide away. We know service groups in the community put money here, and we appreciate that. We don't want the center to go away. We just want to fix the problems here. Yeah, try it. No one should be placed into it the way it is now. It's a toxic environment. It is not beneficial to the blind. You need real blind mentors in there again. You need people side by side supporting each other, not being treated as a cash cow business. That's right. As president, you have 12 years. If you guys ever some of the term limits that's going to raise some eyebrows <laughs> right uh, yes term limits yeah you shouldn't have to put them in place but some people aren't smart enough to vote them out <laughs> right right Very because, interesting. i mean we all remember bonnie hammer the original operations manager that this board you know, was tasked finally because we had had enough of the abuse of the, all the allegations of misappropriations, everything going on there. They didn't want it publicized. They didn't want to investigate it. They wanted to sweep it under the rug. So we, we wrote up EEOC complaints eventually about how we were being harassed in the workplace, bullied in the workplace. So, you know, but you guys pride yourself on being so independent. Why you can't operate this time clock? when she bought one with multi-layer systems that we cannot bump on use. No consideration was put into the purchase of that equipment. And then we were humiliated in front of the other staff because we had to ask for help to operate it. You know, they were so happy that they thought they weren't subject to the ADA here forever, you know, because they had fewer than 15 employees. Then they learned finally, Michelle learned in California, five or fewer, then she finally created an accommodations request form, not that they acted appropriately, but why should a Center for Disabled People be delighted to think that they are not supposed to make accommodations legally if they can't? You know, why wouldn't right. you work with your employees? Why wouldn't you help them so that they look like competent role models exactly. for clients that are coming in to be served? Why would you bring people to the point of tears to ask for help that should be apparent is needed because your thought process has not made it a welcoming place to the blind. Yeah. There are so many facets to this. 
No, Bonnie was gone. We made that board get rid of her finally. Against their will, we had to twist their arm. Yeah. And they resent us for that. Yeah. Instead of firing her, arresting her, investigating her, whatever would have applied, they gave her a nice retirement package, left her in place over us for months and months while they looked for a new director. And after she knew everything that we had said about her, we were targeted by her more. She was a little more wary because she knew we had shared things with the board, but we were continually in that environment until, and she got to stay there after work, shredding documents to her heart's content. There were no safeguards put in place for the center, its finances, or its records. Finally, they did find a new director, Michelle Galvin, who we tried to give a chance. We tried to give her a chance, but it didn't work out. She turned out to be, you know, a control freak too. Uh, she turned out to be the next worst thing, except for what she brought up under her as her henchwoman, who is now the new director. This board president has heard our tears, our complaints, our concerns about all three of these individuals and done nothing. Not right. Judy Hall needs to go. We need a new board president. That's right. Tell us where that money went. Yes. We need someone with a heart. That's and right. Need actual live blind experience as part of that board of directors as far as we know they don't have any blind members because they say they can't tell us the characteristics of the new people they brought on the board I, we believe one of them might be visual paired because he's been a client profile on their website for several years now services but we've never been told that there's blind representation and they never looked for any until our membership wanted to be represented. Then they made up a cap of, we have three spots and medically your fourth candidate, the one you are proposing, has no place on this board of directors. It's all a sham. It's not for the bond. Needs to be up blind. Nothing about us without us. Nothing, Nothing about us without us. 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 Amen. They made me quit my job. We're standing up for Bob. They made me quit my job. We're standing up for Bob. They made me quit my job. We're standing up for Bob. They made me quit my job. They made me quit my job. They got rid of Janet. They tried to get Miguel Venegas fired from his job. Right. That's how they play. You're not allowed to share opinions. Or any kind of or tell them how quiet feel about something. There's the door. You get constantly reminded, which is part of bullying, harassing workplace, yeah. that this is an at will establishment. You can be fired at any time for any reason. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, we've gone before. To the, that operations manager, Bonnie Hammond, yes. you know, uh, I heard when I first started around 2000 that people in the public and the staff clients were actually allowed at the board meetings at least once a year for that annual meeting where they gave a report where they could take feedback from the public and it, it was really hard to believe. I said, you know, when is the annual meeting? And of course it was June when Elena asked her, so she said, oh, it's in May of every year because that was a year away. <laughs> no, <laughs> but so then the there was no reminder, no notice of that meeting. But a few of us, like David and I, some professionals who have come to learn about the toxic environment and the problems there's a job mediator they got rid of when she wouldn't just rat out staff instead of trying to help. The psychologist, psychiatrist that had come in to do a volunteer support group who knew the mental health of everyone was being impacted there. Yeah. We had a range of people from the community supporting us. We just walked into that meeting Although the operations manager told me the board did not want to hear from the public, the community, they offered services that people could take them or leave them. Yes. So we went in and made them take our letters. You know, there's always the board president who has this email account that finally got created, but we have no confidence that it goes to anyone but her and maybe the executive director. They passed a bylaw last year that anything said there that she deems bullying or harassing can be discarded without sharing it with the rest of the board. Well, that's been her policy all along, in our opinion. We yeah. managed to get in front of a few of those other board members, so they are not without culpability here, because we know they know there are problems. They might not know everything that we have ever said or said, 
but if they have a conscience and a soul, they need to speak up and help make this case. So they need to go with the president. Yes. Right. We hope that someone from that board will have a conscience, speak yeah. up, stand up, and help make this change. Yes. Be open. Be kind. And listen to the blind. Be open. Be kind. And listen to the blind. Be open. Be kind. And listen to the blind. Be open. Be kind. And listen to the blind. Another part of this bullying and harassing workplace is, you know, as an employee, if I hire someone else and come up to management, a supervisor, to say how I've been sexually harassed by a fellow employee, by a volunteer, anyone, you usually get laughed at. I've had that experience. I got broke by a volunteer. I went and told that operations manager, Bonnie Hama, and she sent him home for a few weeks. Said, oh, don't come around here. But he was right back, because obviously he was more valuable than wow. me. You know, that is not appropriate. No. And I know it's happened to other people too. Hopefully they can share their stories. But tell someone laugh at you or act like you. And it's been laughed off or dismissed or blamed on the person. But yeah. Wow. I agree. I agree. And the one of the sad things about this is is uh that this isn't an isolated incident. Um, the sad thing is, is that many in the, the blind community are put into this mindset that they need to be grateful for what they've got. If they're mistreated, they just accept it and move on because they're getting something. We're not entitled, folks. We don't have a sense of entitlement here. What it is, is that we are people just as well. We bleed red. Yeah just a trigger warning for those who are watching the stream out there um recently in the past year i believe it was and jen you may know about this others of you might some of the schools for the blind um there have been um sa situations where uh some of the students in these schools who are blind um have been sexually mistreated yes. there's sexual misconduct there's always cover -ups. There, there are cover-ups and and the thing is is that Many places do not teach people who are blind or otherwise disabled to advocate for themselves because unfortunately it's this unspoken rule in society that we just need to be happy with what we get. There's so much stuff. I, I won't get into all the details, but SSI, for instance, grateful for it. But how many people would be happy living off of 625 an hour full-time job? The thing is, a center for the blind, for the blind, mind you, has the word community in the in the in the name, but does not practice that word. Community is a combination of people from all walks of life. That's right. They are not uh, assimilating into one. They are individuals with individual opinions, individual perspectives, individual goals. Yes. And a, and the community takes all of those puzzle pieces, and it's supposed to make something beautiful. That's right. But with this place is it's like a game that my grandpa used to play with me called 52 card pickup you take that deck of cards and you throw it up in the air and it goes everywhere and sometimes some of those cards don't get found that folks that is not convergence convergence coming together for the better good of everybody involved that is divergence it's a breaking apart a community is supposed to be a group of individuals who, though they have different experiences, different goals, different walks of life, they come together for the better good. A support group should be a place about edification and confidence, not a place where if somebody speaks badly about the center, sorry, we don't worship the center. That's right. We do not worship the center. The center is a vehicle, yeah. a vehicle by which those who participate and those who can go through and receive training can walk out feeling stronger, feeling more independent, yeah. more capable, yeah. not walk out feeling like they've been bashed and their self-esteem has been torn down yeah. and feeling hopeless and discouraged yeah. and helpless and alone yeah. because you can't even trust to talk to your co-workers. Yeah. Right. Now, I, I, I had a co-worker here, good, a real good guy. Um, 
And I was afraid to ask him if I could write the work with him because I was afraid that that might go against what the executive director, Elsie Hirata, wanted. So instead, I just continued paying the lift fees, come back and forth, because I was told you can't really trust talking to your coworkers very much, but if you have anything you need to talk about, you can come to me. No, no. See, micromanaging and control. Control, because the more that they know about you, the more they can manipulate. I was feeling pressured to move up here until I saw how this place was. A place that would probably throw you out like the trash if you didn't always say yes. I am more than trash. I am not trash. That's right. I am an individual with hopes and dreams. I am a father and a brother and a son and yeah. a community member and a friend to people. Amen. Various places. I have a desire to help people. But I can't help people if I'm constantly being broken and I wouldn't allow this place to break me down. Yeah. Right. One hospital visit, and then it took some time to think as to whether or not I wanted to go back to that hospital again. We're that's, here for you, Bob. And I'm here for you all as well. Yeah. And that's why we're out here, folks. We're not out here uh, under the label that they put on us as troublemakers. No, the troublemakers are in those executive offices back there, yeah. not caring about the clients, looking at the clients as high maintenance, yeah. driven clients, clients who speak up for themselves. Yeah. Clients who know what they want and who know where they're going. Yeah. They are not high maintenance. They are driven. Get the vocabulary right. right. If you got a master's degree, you ought to know better than that for crying out loud. Yeah. And to speak down like they're all simple, like we're not capable of understanding. If you set the bar high, people can reach for that bar, but you just want to throw out the basic services that you get money for. You don't care about the whole picture the blind of all ages, how we contribute to each other at this place. That's right. There is no sense of community here. You don't let us around blind youth because we might infect them with our positive philosophy of blindness. They might actually have expectations of where they're going with their life, not just checking off your boxes to get your paycheck for the Department of Rehabilitation. That's right. We know that you have overridden educated assessments from teachers of the visually impaired or your own age. Adaptive technology staff I've seen it. to save Department of Rehab money to send a blind high school senior to college with a PC to drag around instead uh, of a laptop. That's right, they need a portable and device. Another example this is what Director Elsie Harati did to save money for Department of Rehabilitation. That is not your call, that is not your area of expertise. You need to let the people that know what they are doing recommend what's best for these people and if department That's of right. rehabilitation does not meet those expectations the clients can take it up with them but you do not need to interfere you have no right to do this no. we need quality qualified staff at all levels in this organization a new executive director that is found with blind input and that board president has to go at a minimum we will start fixing and being part of this process. Like we said, we're not trying to tear it down. We're trying to build it back up. Yeah. We are blocked from doing that. If it runs into the ground, it's their fault with their arrogance, their conceit, and their lack of consideration for the blind. Yeah. Right. I can attest when it comes to the AT because I was an AT instructor here and I loved the work. I hated the environment. Even though I was working virtually most of the time, I dreaded when there was a call from Elsie. Because I wasn't sure if I was going to get chewed out for something or get commended. And that's the way that an abusive environment works. They, they, they stretch and release and stretch and release until they break you to the point of being pliable to their whim. That's right. But I was in a place where there was a client who wanted to go to work. And I was told that I need to recommend a desktop. Hey, I'm the instructor here. Yeah. I'm the one with the technological experience. Why'd you hire me if you were going to tell me something else when you don't have that experience? That's right. No, no, you don't micromanage. You let people do their jobs, but that requires trust and trust requires relinquishment of total control. Yeah. But I was told to recommend a desktop when a laptop would have been a better fit. And not just that, but recommendations for more accessible mobile equipment. See, the thing is, I, I used to be a solid Android user. Uh -huh. The executive director is uh, mostly an Android user, has better vision than me. And I was recommending the iPhone products for individuals with disabilities because from my findings since using an iPhone from 2019 on, yes, 
the bar for accessibility is a lot higher. That's right. Yeah. But I was told I needed to pick one or the other. And that's the thing. If I was hired as an assistive technology instructor, one, one of my responsibilities is that of writing assessments. Why in the world are you telling me how to write my assessments when I have a degree in clear information systems? Now, I may not have a master's degree, right. but that doesn't mean I've not been independently studying my butt off. And it doesn't mean I don't know what I'm talking about. You're an active user of the products as well. That's correct. And this is the thing here with this. There's more community in this group out here who has been kicked to the curb than there is within those walls. Within those walls is a cult. And some people are victims to that cult. Others are the leaders. While the community is out here trying to provoke change, positive change, not destructive change, but positive change to build something better and brighter. And that's not gonna happen unless there is change from within. Yeah. It's like, like I said one time before, it may look pretty on the outside, but on the inside, it's full of dead men's bones. That's right. People who have been abused, insulted, put down, yeah. rejected, and broken to the point where self-worth is clear out the window. Yeah. You can't polish a turd. No, you can't. Polish a turd, still a turd. But... As, yeah, as Bob was saying, it is like a cult. You get thrown under the bus. People are told to smell on each other like children. You know, you get points, but you hope you're not the next one getting thrown under that bus. Right. If you're not a yes man, there's no place for you here. You get all the work dumped on you. You're constantly criticized, micromanaged, and abused. Yeah. That is not a productive workplace. It's not a healthy workplace. And the Department of Rehabilitation should not be placing people here to work nor to learn until this is rectified. That's we have right. been meeting with them on this. They say they can't do much about the inner workings of an agency, but we are explaining how that all bleeds over and how that needs to change. Yes. That's right. If, if you're watching this online right now and you're in this area and you are being referred to this place by Department of Rehabilitation and you have observed the situation here, you do not have to come here. You can request to be sent to a different center for training. You have that right. You have that right and you can exercise it. That's right. They may make you feel uncomfortable for advocate, advocating for yourself. This place will make you feel uncomfortable for advocating for yourself because you should be happy with the crumb. It's okay to pay a roughly a hundred dollars for a round trip to work when you make about a hundred and twenty dollars gross yeah, a day right just to come to work guys and if they do make you feel intimidated because they're good at that oh yeah reach yeah. out to us we will attend that phone or in-person meeting with you as an advocate one of our members at least can be there that's right because we don't want you to have to make decisions out of fear out of pressure out of not knowing what your objects are and that's what they rely on yeah both here and at the Department of Rehabilitation. Until that changes, yeah. we need staff in the Stockton, San Joaquin County area that have the interest of the blind first, that have transparency, accountability, and appropriate responsiveness to the blind. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Now, I've seen from former clients the uh, intimidation tactics. Uh, one such client spoke up and was told, if you continue to behave like this, we're going to have to reevaluate your case. You don't rule us. No. Right. You're supposed to be here for us. Live by your mission. Right. Live by your mission. They if took you're... down the vision statement. I wonder why, because it was too open to offering more than the bare minimum. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> Live by your mission. We are not going to take what you've been dishing. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of a tongue twister, but, uh, but that's the thing. Number one, if you're not going to be a community, take the word off your sign. Because right. like I said, there's more community out here on this sidewalk yeah. than there is in there. Now, there are some good staff members in there. Right. And they're working their jobs because, well, we, we all out here know. Yeah. What it's like to find a job yeah, when right. you're visually impaired. 
It's it's quite a task, guys. Another thing to hold over your head, that fear of loss of employment or services, you'll take whatever they dish out because they don't think you have an alternative. That's right. I, I, I've seen that when I was here too. Yes. I, I felt the pressure. And then when I, when I, interestingly, when I talked to my Department of Rehabilitation counselor about feeling the pressure, then Elsie said, you don't feel like you're under any pressure, do you? And I, I, I more and more, I've been seeing that that counselor who was transferred to Sacramento. Went right to her with every word from your mouth. That's it. That's it. Not, not to work it out on your behalf, obviously, no. because that wasn't the outcome. That's what I've heard and experienced around here, too. You can't trust them. People say, oh, why don't you tell the rehabilitation counselor what happened? Why? So you can go tell them that person and get That's them right. in trouble or get their case reevaluated. It's not like they will deal with things appropriate here. And that's one of our big concerns. That's right. Yeah. There needs to be change, not a breakdown, because this place has so much potential. Yeah. But it needs people leading it who have a heart. A heart for the community, a heart that's not going to throw people out to the sidewalk where people who are blind or who support the blind have to protest out of a sensor who is supposed to be for the blind. That's right. Those doors should be open and people who are blind should be able to come in regardless of their if, of their affiliations, organizational affiliation. Right. Yeah. If you're part of the NFB, yeah, shouldn't be looked at as a troublemaker. What's that? Tell us about the NFB. I will. I will. And then I'll, I'll clip it out. I'll flip it out and I'll get that. <laughs> So, I had, a, I had a talk with the director, Elsie Harada, by name, so there's no confusion. And uh, that, that one day, there were some phrases that were stated that I won't repeat here because of expletives. Um, let's just say, it rhymes with wit, uh, well, yeah, it rhymes with wit. Like, like, uh, like Jim Ross on WWF back in the day said, it, it, it rhymes with witch and starts with a B. And that executive director told me that I'm a witch and I've always been a witch. Now, like I said, you replace that word with the rhyming counterpart. All right. Now, intimidation. Intimidation. Now, I used to be a board member with uh, my local chapter of National Federation of the Blind in the Central Valley. And I, I had to walk away, not because of that local branch, just because there was too much going on in life. And I did put that information on my resume and I was told, I was told that they were considering not hiring me because of my affiliation with National Federation of the Blind. I was told that one of the reasons that they don't really want to have people come in is because sometimes NFB members would come in and they're troublemakers. Now, oh, yeah. the, the interesting thing about this is, is that this, this center pays for executive director Elsie Harada to be a member of National Federation right. of the Blind. And they tried to join as an agency until they found out you could only do it as an individual and then the past director Michelle placed her in there as what did you call it a troll? I think troll would be the word. <laughs> yeah. I know on YouTube you said someone that just jumps into yep. your chat to Yep, someone, someone exactly, they are trolls, they will jump into the chat, Lori and I have a lot of experience with that, they'll jump We're into the chat, she looks like a right, troll. right, using an analogy. yes, this is, a, that's beside the point. this is an internet analogy, a troll is somebody who enters somewhere where they don't really want to be, but they go there to stir crap up, that's right, and this is exactly what's going on here, yes. and see too, to turn someone away because of their affiliations, folks, right? That's uh, there's a big D word associated with that discrimination. called discrimination. They discrimination. They did that to our board candidate because they knew she was affiliated with the NFB. Wow. They've done that to several of us that were trying to be a board candidate. Now, doesn't that go against the ADA right there? I don't think that your political or group affiliation should impact your hiring. It does go against the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, though. Right. Yep, and that's the thing. They consider... They said it was a conflict of interest to a lot of us. Right. When when I mentioned, because they, they acted like nobody had ever tried to be on the board before, and like blind representation was a foreign concept to them, that, you know, when the NFB chapter locally was meeting with a few of the board representatives and Michelle and Elsie in February of 2021, 
we said, is there a problem with NFB members, you know, applying to be on the board? The board president turned around and said, we have concerns about confidentiality. I instantly said, are you saying that blind people can't maintain confidentiality? And she said that wasn't what she was saying. I don't know what it had to do with blindness or the NFB. It sounds like Body Hamma saying, tell a phone, tell a friend, tell a blind right. person, and it's all over town. Sighted people like do the same thing. Yep. Now, you want to know what else is a conflict of interest, folks? A group of individuals who are blind and their supporters standing on a sidewalk in front of a center who's supposed to serve the blind community. The word community is on a sign, but it is not being practiced. That's a conflict of interest right there. Yeah. It is. We're out here protesting against a place that should be doing what it's supposed to do anyway, yeah. but they don't. This is the only venue we have because they will not listen unless you help us make them listen. Yeah. They knew they could just turn off Zoom where we couldn't raise our hand or comment in their little fake meetings. They know they don't have to respond to our emails or phone calls because the board president can discard whatever she wants. This is why we had to go public last August 2021 with a letter to the editor and continuing since then in our efforts because we're tired of not being heard. Yeah. The blind need to be part of the community center for the blind. Yes. What we want and what we desire for this place to become is important and they need to treat it as such. Yeah, that's right. We are the blind with the lived experience of being blind. Yeah. We know how to help each other. Yeah. We've done that more than this place has definitely yeah. throughout this pandemic. Our organizations have risen up in the community. Yeah. We're not getting paid. We care. We reach out. We help. Yeah. We've got supplies for students. We've, you know, provided transportation to people. Yeah. We will go to an IEP meeting with a student if they need that advocacy. There is no advocacy here. There is not a lot of help here and there are hardly any virtual services unless they know they can get top dollar for the Department of Rehabilitation. Yeah. So we need to expand on that and make it an inclusive, robust place again, serving the blind. Yeah. Right. What I find of interest to me personally is that when I came up here to mostly work virtually once a week, I had to take one day's paycheck roughly to do that. I've been up here in Stockton more for these protests than I was when I was working here. And that's because there's a community who knows the struggles and they helped me to come up here. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting to me that you, you, you know, you know, even if you have little to no self-worth, you know who you're worth something to and who you're not. And I'm thankful to be up here with this group, and I'm thankful that they sacrificed in and of themselves so that I can come up here with them and help to speak out. Whereas I had to pay out of my own pocket to come up here via Lyft, to come up for a staff meeting and then do virtual work. And if I had to stay home because my son was sick and I gave advance notice, I got chewed out for that. Sorry, my family comes first. My family comes first. Y'all call this place a family on the inside. No, 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 it's more like the Godfather. You you do you do what you do what you're told or you're gone. Well I'm gone. I'm gone because I am worth more than that. The staff in there is worth more than that, and I can guarantee you they're not getting paid what they're worth. That's right. Well there's an executive director getting paid uh, roughly seventy five thousand dollars a year while everybody else is carrying the workload on their shoulders. I know I did marketing outreach and activities for ten dollars and twenty-five cents an hour, and the only reason Janet ever got a raise was when the minimum wage went up and they were forced to increase her wage. And she's been there over thirteen years. All right. Oh, we welcome, Janet. Janet. But you know, you show people what they're worth in a good workplace. You're rewarded for what you do right. You're encouraged. You're just trained. If something is wrong, you're not shredded and thrown under the bus for a mistake that probably was made from higher up, but you're the likeliest target. And we've seen that over and over Been and there. over again. Yeah. It's humiliating to have a director brag that the highlights of the accomplishments here is they taught people how to brush their teeth or pick up a glass of water. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Agreed. Coming yeah. from being a volunteer manager and a hairdresser with no HR experience. 
that might be a little explanatory, is, you know, the lack of vetting that candidate. But, but there are people like that that would have done a much better job because we don't characterize people by your education. We characterize you by your willingness to listen, learn, and reach out to see what the blind experience is and how you can be a part of making it better. That's right. That is right. That's why we're out here. That's right. And we'll continue to be That's out right. here until change happens. We're not going to stop. It's, it's funny because we are categorized out here as bullying and harassing, but yet, as many of you saw, and I, I have a YouTube video that's out there that's unlisted. I've got to make sure that it's all right to put out there public, but if anyone wants the link, it's out on my Twitter, it's out on my Facebook. Last week, we were out here peacefully protesting. We were not putting out threats. We were not doing anything wrong. And the blind center, Center for the Blind called the police yeah. on blind protesters. Right. Now, they say that they say that they uh, want to help the blind community, but they're calling the police on their own, their own who tried to speak out privately. If you didn't want us out here, you should have listened in the first place. Yeah. Or but, even asked us if there was a different way to communicate with you that would actually work. Yeah. Because we haven't found one yet. That's right. But instead, the police are called. But you know what? We're Americans here, folks. Yeah. We're allowed to use our voice. We're not out here to threaten. We're not out here to destroy. We're out here to build up. Yeah. And if they choose to continue to walk that path of destruction instead of walking a path of building up and being a cohesive unit and a fully functioning community, then change needs to happen. Yeah. It needs to happen. We are here. The community's on the sidewalk. Yeah. You won't let us in because you think you're better than us. Uh, we're on equal ground, but if you're going to act like you're better than us, you've chosen to be in a worse position. That's your choice. Our choice is to stand for, stand for our rights as American citizens. Yeah. Stand up for disability rights. Stand yeah. up for the futures. And of, human rights. And human, human rights, human exactly. Rights. Because no one, no one of any disability whether you are wheelchair bound, whether you're hearing impaired, no one deserves to be treated like this. No. We just happen to be a blind community out here outside of a center for the blind. We're standing up for the rights that we have as citizens of this country. Yeah. And we'll continue to do so. We'll continue to use our voices. And to the neighbors, we apologize for the disturbance here. If you have a problem with it, just talk to your neighbor in suite number five. They don't want to listen to us, maybe they'll listen to you. Right. 209-466-3836, Community Center for the Blind, or board at communitycenterforthe.blind.org. So when they came out last week, what did the cops say to you, right? So, because some of us weren't here last week. Uh, so well, well, it was. <laughs> so what did they say, Bob? So basically, basically what happened was, is that uh, the, the officer came up and asked some questions and asked what we were doing. and what it was about. And then he proceeded to ask where the entrance was to CCBVI. And he came back out and uh, he he was asked by Raphael, um, I have a question for you. And the officer looked at him. I, I, I've got the video, Raphael sent it to us. And I yes. I accompanied that video with some music. To protesting Community Center for the Blind for not letting the blind be a part of the process and abusing it. And locking the doors. They're doors are locked. They haven't opened since COVID. Right. You know, they're teaching their classes through Zoom. Right. We want to change in the management and some of our membership to be allowed to be part of the board of directors to help a positive change. I appreciate Thank you for that. You. Thank you. Stay safe. Yes. So, yeah, exactly. So when that officer came out, we could do that chant after this. But it's the blind center called the cops. We don't care. We'll never stop. So the officer came out and he, he looked at Raphael and he said they, they aren't doing anything wrong. They're protesting peacefully. That's their right. I made a video. Um, and, well, I didn't make the video. Raphael did. But I accompanied it with music. The first half has bad boys, bad boys. What you going to do? 
And the officer comes out, and after he says, that's all right, I amplified that part. And after that, it's, I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. That's right. So ready, guys? Ready for that chant? Yeah. The boys say to call the cop. We don't care. We'll never stop. The boys say to call the cop. We don't care. We'll never stop. The boys say to call the cop. We don't care. We'll never stop. The boys say to call the cop. We don't care. We'll never stop. Blind respect, you never show. Tell hit the road. Blind respect, you never show. Tell Harada, hit the road. Blind respect, you never show. Tell Harada, hit the road. Respect, you never show. Tell Harada, hit the road. We want a new board president. Tell us where the money went. We want a new board president. Tell us where the money went. We want a new board president. Tell us where the money went. Want a new board president? Tell us where the money went. Hide and lie. Defend CCBVI. They bully, hide and lie. Defend CCBVI. They bully, hide and lie. CCBVI. Bully, hide and lie. Defend CCBVI. Center. The blind deserve better. Fix the blind center. The blind deserve better. Fix the blind center. The blind deserve better. Fix the blind center. The blind deserve better. Be open. Be kind and listen to the blind. Be open. Be kind and listen to the blind. Be open. Be kind and listen to the blind. Be open. Be kind and listen to the blind. You can reach out to us at 209 8589 Stockton Blind Alliance at gmail.com. We have uh, <clears throat> Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube channel, Stockton Blind Alliance. Please get connected. We can help you or see how you can help. Thank you. That's right. Water or my and they're soft, chewy ones. She said they're soft, chewy ones. <laughs> <laughs> Crunchy bar. There's a reason, folks, we're out here in this heat. There's a reason that we choose to come here from our different locations. I come up here when I come to these protests and I'm here at about 7 a.m. And I wait until it's about time. There's a reason I'm here. I, just as well as many others who are standing out here and those who can't be with us, have been done wrong by this place. And it's not, not a situation where we're feeling entitled. But if you're going to use the word community, then you need to live by the words that you use. If you're not going to live by the words that you use, then that the words need to be taken out of the sign. Are okay. oh, you good? Oh, no, no, no. Not at the moment, but thank you. But it's time for change. 16 weeks, folks. 16 weeks. That's about four months. Four months. And we'll keep going. We have a community yeah. advocate reaching out to us to try to help us. That's right. Get them on a page with us, but there is no movement coming from them to acknowledge this or be any part of the change or inclusive of the blind. Yeah. Either one of those are not taken. That's yeah. right. They don't want to talk. Four months. They don't no want to share. Oh, that's a good one. There you go. So sound and sound will too basically. Yep. Yep. Well, I, I can tell you a fishy story. I like your the veil needs to drop. The exploitation has to stop. The veil needs to drop. The exploitation has to stop. The veil needs to drop. The exploitation has to stop. The veil needs to drop. The exploitation has to stop. Let the clients grow. Administration has to go. 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 And I'll, I'll say something about that chant there, because some people would ask, well, what if the administration decides to change? From what I've seen here, and from what I've heard reported, any change is temporary. It's face value. It's there for appearances, like the membership to the NFB. It's there for appearances. The change. 
It's not going to happen with the individuals. The individuals need to be changed out. If the board of directors will turn itself around and actually work, that's fine. But the board president and the executive director, at a minimum, need to be resigned and gone immediately. That's right. We are willing to try to work with the rest. We are happy to ask one of their members that will step up with a conscience to be a, you know, interim board president. And we would even be happy to have Joni Bauer, one of the staff here, who has done it before, step in as acting director while we complete that search for a vetted quality candidate that is concerned for the blind. You know, I know she wants to retire. God bless her for trying to keep this place going. She's about the only legitimate thing they have left. We would like her help. We ask, I know she deserves to retire. I know she wants to retire. If she could do that one more time while we turn things around, we would work with the rest of the ship. We put our blood, sweat, and equity into this place over and over, helping each other. We are willing to be part of that process. They are the ones who refuse to change and include us. That's right. It's not about changing the ship. It's about changing the captain. Yes. The ship can be sailed in a better direction. It just needs to be cleaned up a bit. Yeah. And that's the thing. This ship has the potential to sail. It's been sailing for a long time, since about 1949. There's not a problem with the ship. There's a problem with the captain. Yeah. And the captain needs to walk the plank. <laughs> Because there are too many, too many passengers who have been on board this ship who have been put down in the hole in cages and not allowed to grow. They've been thrown overboard. Some jumped. I'm one of those who jumped. I'd rather been out with a shark. It says a lot for a blind person to leave a job with no job to go to when it's so hard to find employment here in Washington. To go back to the poverty line. But many of us have made that choice rather than make ourselves ill, staying here knowing that we go home carrying that stress load through the night. Our families are feeling, everyone, that's why our families are out here. They know they've seen what it's done to us. Yeah. We appreciate right. every cent, every minute, every piece of love that they have shared to be out here, help us get here, support us, help make these signs, just share our posts, whatever they can do. A lot of our members, sighted or blind are working or at school, can't be here, can't afford the transportation, can't get the transportation arrangements, but they're here with us in spirit. And we right. will come out as many of us as can each time until these changes happen. That's right. We're right. stocked and blind alliance. We're standing, standing up to help the clients. Stocked and blind alliance. We're standing up to help the clients. Stocked and blind alliance. We're standing up to help the clients. Stocked and blind alliance. We're standing up to help the clients. And the staff, and the volunteers. That's it. Anyone in the community that's trying to collaborate with this place and big crap on. That's right. There is no sense of community here, as Bob said. That's right. It's what you can get, not what you can give. Yeah. And they burn bridges left and right. We yeah. need to restore that before there is no center for the blind. That's it. Or we need it all hands on deck to create a better alternative if they refuse to change. I, I want to thank my fiance who lives 1300 miles away because when we're out here streaming she's working behind the scenes to help to keep that going uh, with the uh, the platform that we use and she's a part of this protest just as well from 1300 miles away how does it feel knowing that there are people watching this in Australia and other places around the world other places in the United States and now it's out on Twitter now it's out on Facebook now it's out on two YouTube channels it's going everywhere. This isn't something that's just going to be isolated to just these folks. This community out on the sidewalk. It's going everywhere. It's going to be heard. Everywhere. Everywhere. And it's not going to stop until change happens. Yeah. Because we have had enough. We've been through enough. You know, $100,000 a year and below is considered low income in California. While I was working here, I was making about 20 an hour for my services. Crumbs. And the thing is, is I was paying out a day's wage to come here once a week. No, you can't live off of crumbs, especially when you're a single dad with two kids. And here's the thing about that. I chose to go back down to making less than half of that per month because my health 
My family was more important. My mental health was more important. I've never been on blood pressure medication. I've never been on antidepressants. I had to talk to my doctor in my last few weeks at this place because I felt like I was already on my way back to the hospital again. Do they care? No. No, they don't. CCBVitis. CCBVitis. That's right. That's Sometimes right. Fatal. That's right. Don't let it get you to that point. Get out of here and go to the There was an instructor here who worked here previously. We were here at a staff meeting. It was while masks were still required. And she took her mask down to take a drink of coffee. And she was degraded for that. She was degraded for that. And she talked to me privately and said, Bob, I don't think I'm going to be here much longer. You can even do that on an airplane. That's right. And she, she would drive in here from Waterford wow. to come here to work. Really wonderful person. That's it. She thought it would be fun. She loved teaching what she taught. But she was made to feel minimized and she was very well qualified for the job. I but her Madison second guest at every turn. That's right. That's right. And she told me privately and I, I looked back to make sure I wasn't being spied on because they spy on you here folks. Even yeah. even in the support group. Right. If you're attending a support group at Community Center for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Confidentiality is not guaranteed, folks. It's not guaranteed. And you aren't going to find the, the full support that you need. Aren't the clients supposed to sign a confidentiality form when they start here? I think they do. I think that they do have to. Oh, we do. They do. We do. But I think the clients have to, too. Yeah, they do. Not to tell their little secrets. Well, but here's what? the question, though. Why is it that the clients actually uphold their end of the bargain as far as the confidentiality? Well, I right. Tell, I tell clients out today, like, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, I got a whole lot to say. That's right. Kenna was the only person that gave you a milk of human kindness here. You know, she helped us stay here at her own health expense, I'm sure. I know how many times we saw her belittle. They always do that they in front of everybody. They said the clients take up too much time and yeah. too much money. Yeah, and that... Every staff meeting, that's yeah. what I heard. And that's the thing, too much time and too much money. Wow. The only money I know that was spent on the clients was twenty dollars a month for healthy cooking class. Wow. Oh my gosh. They say the clients come first and that lie is the biggest and worst. I know Janet brought, bought snacks out of her own pocket to bring while we had classes and stuff because she wants to make it for once, was it once a week for a while for yeah. the bowl. So that was it. But you couldn't be out too many hours because, you know, you're not supposed to be using your hours to help clients, right, Janet? Right. They're they're sold them. Them. They probably sold it. No, they parked at RTD. They said that was too expensive, too. And even though they had just gotten a grant for a brand new van, finally, with a list for the first time ever, one of the employees drove it under the underpass at the old center parking lot and ruined it right away. He was a good guy, though. He was a good guy, though. But, so, but they didn't care about fixing it and getting it back up and running because their whole intent was to get rid of this transportation program. But wait, 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 wait a second. So... They can't afford that, but they can afford $75,000 a year for an executive director who doesn't care about the people with clients? No experience and no heart. They expanded on the space there since they've been here just prior to the pandemic, and they're still paying for two extra offices back there behind. And what is that space being used for? They quit because they weren't paid enough and they were overworked. They didn't yep. work here a year. And yep. disrespected. Yeah. We've had five to six staff leave in the last year. And so I can say there's a mass exodus of clients and staff. They'll say there are clients here because of the pandemic. It's a lie. Many had not come before the pandemic. And they are still counting us in the hundred or whatever number they're reporting. Yeah. We know personally we have not received any service for other people. They're, serving they're not 100. Yeah. It's been over a year since many of us have had even one thing to do with this center. Supposedly they care about us and they even stop calling us, some of us. 
Yeah. They used to do a well, well checkup once a month. That was because it was Joni doing it, but then Joni went off on leave for a while, so there was no one that cared her to do it or to put money to that task of actually checking on the clients during the pandemic. I got a little story for you. While I was up here, I, well, I was working at home, but while I was working here, I should say, I, I received a call from Executive Director Elsie Harada, uh, encouraging me to take independent independent living skills training, even though I've been on my own with my kids for over seven years. So they were trying to make money off of me as a client while I was paid out a day's wage to come up here to teach. How kind of her. <laughs> how, how degrading, yeah. how degrading. See, that's the way that they feel about the blind community. And this is disgraceful. It is a slap in the face are lining up for their classes. That's right. They That's right. But it's an absolute disgrace. People deserve better than that. There is no hope that's given in this place, especially when you're someone who is pushing to work and you're being called high maintenance. You know, that's, that's a degrading term. It is. Very degrading. Yeah. out of control. It is the soft bigotry of low expectations. Correct. Especially if they're so high maintenance, exactly how much are they spending on each one? Yeah. That's a good question. But they were, they were I want my horseshoes back, damn it. <laughs> well, they were, I, think they I were enjoyed sold. playing dark. Right? That was fun. We actually had a yard, a hall, a training kitchen, a training apartment, all those facilities at the old building. I gave away in a heartbeat for $400,000. There was a lot of stuff in that center. Yeah. Random yeah. stoves, we, right. uh, two refrigerators, a box freezer. And they were all accessible, and the clients were they told were. if they sold anything from it, they would get first crack at it, but they were never offered that. And the yard sale was never publicized to the clients. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Basketball. Man, I just <coughs> remind me of the basketball. And air hockey. All those yeah, um, holiday decorations. Yeah, right. Three. And um, yoga mat. You know what I? You know what I miss? Yeah. Yoga mat. You know what I miss? You know what I miss? The days where we would have bingo and the red hats, the red hatters would show up, yeah. and they'd have about two or three tables. Right. Right. Say, you can always <laughs> pick the custom when you hear Robert say bingo. Right. <laughs> and the happy travelers. Yeah. Now listen to these stories, folks. Those of you who are watching on the streams out there. Good old this is a community out here. Yeah. Community with memories. Yeah. Who's been thrown to the sidewalk? I got my baby shower there. I know Ellen has her wedding reception there. We had beatball. Oh, we had beatball fundraiser dinners there. Award ceremony. Halloween socials that people have been going to. Our fashion show. The Lions Clubs and Rotary and oh all the different oh organizations oh that could come in and provide entertainment yeah. or food. They just got together just to go on a small little walk around the right. neighborhood. The I social mean, networking and like communication, uh, mentoring, all that uh, fellowship. There's no room or place or desire for that by the management here in this building. You can't even make noise because it's surrounded by other offices. You can't have music, you can't laugh. Like you, you can breathe in the damn building. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. You can't. Wow. Yeah, that's why they have a muzzle on. I mean, a mask on when they're That's right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
lens of the blind, then you actually have people that are invested in what goes on here, but everyone is walled off from this place. Yeah, we are open to who we want to be open to, and that is very, and you have to schedule an appointment just for that to happen. Okay. Oh, okay. No, I, do to say, I do want to say, um, Lisa, would you like this makeup on? Um, uh, yeah. Get the little lady so she makes it Sorry, you're right here. Yeah, you're good. They bully, hide, and lie. Defund CCBVI. Bully, hide, and lie. Defund CCBVI. They bully, hide, and lie. Defund CCBVI. They bully, hide, and lie. Defund CCBVI. Never show. Tell Harada, hit the road. Blind respect you never show. Tell Harada, hit the road. Blind respect you never show. Tell Harada, hit the road. Blind respect you never show. Tell Harada, hit the road. I think Lisa had something she wanted to address. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, the other thing they they were trying to because I is actually one of them to to deny to sign or quiet man, but because I. Said I wanted to take it home for to read it to see what was going on in it. So there is, before you do come back here, there's a handbook they do want you to sign. So do not sign to take it home and have someone read it, or if you have some way to read it through an email, that I, I do want to share that on that information. Roy, come talk to us, Roy. Really? Talk to I don't think listen to us instead of ignoring us, we wouldn't have yep. to be out here. Talk to Include us. Include the blind. Include us on your board of directors yeah. for actual limbs. This is one of the board members right here. One of the board members there. Why is he saying shame, shame, shame to us? He's shaking our heads. We, like, we have sighted people to let us know what's around us. He's taking off right now, everyone. Yeah. Tell us where that money went. We, we want, want a new board president. president. Tell us where the money went. We want a new board president. Tell us where the money went. We want a new board president. Tell us where the money went. We want a new board president. I just Well, I just got him on camera. Oh, you got him on camera. I I recorded him getting in his car right here. This is a public place. It's publicly uh He's been president meetings we've had since 2018. Um, you know, we tried to make our concerns clear to this board yeah. and they don't answer responsibly when you put questions to them you get silent you get little bait and switch you get a little false pretense that they're doing what you ask but it you know like say we want blind representation look we found a lion member from tracy that has one eye now you have a blind board member we're not saying that that man doesn't experience some challenges in life but he doesn't use a t technology like we do. He can yeah. drive. It was just, you know, a bait and switch. Like you say, this is a gesture, a big gesture toward what you're actually asking for. We want actual inclusion here. Yeah. I have a good chant for us. Shame. Uh oh, hold on. Let me turn this up. Turn that on there. All right. Shame, shame, shame. Turn all around, live up to your name. Shame, shame, yeah. shame. shame. Turn around, live up to your name. Shame, shame, shame. Turn around, live up to your name. Shame, shame, shame. Turn around, live up to your name. Shame, shame. Turn around, live up to your name. Those of you watching the stream and you saw that car leave, that was one of the board members. And when he was walking into the office, he walked past us, evidently giving dirty looks, saying, Shame, shame. The ones who need to be ashamed are inside those doors. The way you. Yeah. He's been on it as long as that word president, but I wasn't lumping him in with her until now. Why did he stop? <laughs> what has he got to hide? Yeah. Why did he stop? He didn't ask hide? us questions. No. Nope. They all have to hide. I we called him by name. Maybe it was well, a question. Right here, they're board a guilty no. conscience. So, all right, so last week you all saw the police calling on us. And today you saw one of the board members who could address the situation out here Give dirty looks, say shame, 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 and drive away. Hey, it's time for change. Yes. And knowing that we're blind, how can we get to use verbal words? We can't see that. Jacob. 
That's right. There needs to be change and the shame. Administration has to go. Let the clients grow. Administration has to go. Let the clients grow. Administration has to go. Let the clients grow. Administration has to go. That's something that'll get you fired up right there. Yeah. Somebody who had the authority to try to talk or do something chose to say shame, shame toward American citizens yes. who are blind or their supporters, We're who have been mistreated. To them. They don't want to listen or include us. You know, who has peaceful blind people as enemies except this management? Yes. This board of That's directors. Right. Yes. I welcome everywhere else that I am a part of this community. I'm on different boards and parts of different groups in this community. Yes. I'm never treated like this. Never. This is a board member. This is the first time I've ever protested in my life. Yes. That's right. Like, like, I don't know, I think, I'm sorry, you, Janet, right? Huh? That, yeah. And just like Janet said, this is a board member for a blind center. Who doesn't want the blind around? That's because the community is out on the sidewalk. It's not inside of those walls. Inside of those walls, those walls are like an iron veil. And it's saddening. I heard I heard him under his breath as he walked past going inside saying, shame, shame. I didn't even know he was going inside. I thought it was one of the homeless people with mental challenges that's usually walking around here because he didn't sound any different. What's sad about this? So she what kind of board members are running in the center. Yeah. So if anybody's watching this, you're wondering why we're protesting. Yeah. Uh, number one, last week we saw the police call. Yeah. How many times have we asked the board of directors to please identify themselves because we don't know who's speaking to us or to acknowledge us, to walk by and just speak to us without identifying himself? In a board meeting that we have with them on Zoom, there were new people there. I asked the board president, could she please have people introduce themselves before speaking? She said, you know my voice, Jennifer. I said, I might, but I don't know all these board members' voices, yeah. and some of the people here visiting don't. Yes. And we shouldn't have to constantly defend common blind etiquette to these people yeah. and get snarled at for asking for a little bit of common courtesy. Yeah. That's right. Shame, shame to the clients it's supposed to serve. I know. That's right. It should be ashamed. Yeah. Exactly. What kind yeah. of board member? He's the treasurer, maybe because he doesn't like the where did the money went. Oh, that's very true. Very true. <laughs> very true. Hey, They're well aware of what we're speaking. Yes. So last week you saw the police call up for those of those of you watching these streams that are going out to Twitter, to YouTube, to Facebook. You saw last week that the police were called. The video that was uploaded, I, I put a link out there for your viewing. And today, you see a board member who has the authority to come out and talk. Say shame, shame. To the clients. To the, clients. the clients who are still listed on their record in that 100 number that they say they serve. And these clients are out here exercising their rights. And they're being told shame, shame instead of how can we help you to resolve this issue? They don't want to resolve it. They want us gone because we speak up. Down, they don't want everybody to know. Jenny, is that uh, okay. I have Banda coming out. White 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 shirt. Yeah, my Peter asleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, we'll see you guys. Hi, David. Like have you. a good one, David. Right, it's good thank seeing you, your friend. Yeah, I don't even know what time it is. <laughs> my, my watch guys this morning. Okay. Okay. Call 209 800 589 Black and Blind Alliance on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. Please reach out. We'll share our stories, and we love your support. This is why the board's got to go. That's right. Get the road. Clients. Yeah, one last. Raise it up. Take out, take out that anger about the situation with the board member here. Let's raise it up. Stalked and Blind Alliance. We're standing up to help the clients stuck and bind the lions. Raise it up! Help the clients stuck and bind the lions. We're standing up to help the clients stuck and bind the lions. We're standing up to help the clients. Tell us where that money went. We want a new board president. 
Tell us where the money went. We want a new board president. Tell us where the money went. We want a new board president. Tell us where the money went. We want a new board president. And apparently treasurer since he's standing with her and saying shame, shame, shame to blind clients peacefully protesting in front of the building. Blind respect you never show. show. Tell her Rada, hit the road. Blind respect you never show. Tell her Rada, hit the road. Blind respect you never show. Tell her Rada, hit the road. Blind respect you never show. Tell her Rada, hit the road. They bully. Hide and lie. Defund CCBVI. They bully. Hide and lie. Defund CCBVI. They bully, hide and lie. Defund CCBVI. They bully, hide and lie. Defund CCBVI. Thank you for your support, everybody. Let's make these changes. We're not right. going away. That's right. And again, we're not trying to sink the ship. We're trying to replace the captain. <laughs> well, everybody who's watching out there, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to call Stockton Blind Alliance at 209-200-8589. You can email at Stockton Blind Alliance, all lowercase, at gmail.com. Or you can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook at Stockton Blind Alliance. And for that, we will wrap it up. Thank you, hun, for helping out with that. No problem. Uh, I'm gonna end it. I love you. I love you too, beautiful. And I will. Uh, I'll. I'll give you a call as soon as I get home. Okay? All right. Take care. All right. I love you, hun. I love you too. Bye. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Hun. Whoa!